Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to worship with Vinji Lutheran Church. Happy Easter. It is a wonderful day here. We are excited that we are worshiping together. These pews may be empty, but we know that we are worshiping together and we are worshiping the risen Christ. And we're so excited to celebrate this season of hope, this season of new life, this season that promises that death does not win, that life always wins. It is a wonderful Easter day. And we're so happy to be with all of you today. 
I did want to mention just a couple of quick announcements. First of all, Holy Communion will take place later in our worship service. You are welcome to participate in that through the radio, virtually. Just have some wine and some bread ready for that. If you choose not to participate today, of course, that's all right, too. We will look forward to celebrating communion together around this altar again in due time. We miss you all, and if you have any need, please be sure to reach out to us. Your pastors are still at work for you. Your staff is still at work for you. This entire congregation is still around this community, holding each other up in acts of service and prayer. We are not alone. And so if you ever have a need, it is just a phone call or an email away from being answered. Please do not hesitate to reach out. And guests, if you are with us today, we are so excited that you are joining us as well. If this is your first time listening on the radio, or if you're joining us as a guest uh, virtually through the internet as well, we're excited to have you here on this wonderful Easter day. Let us begin our worship. Christ, as we come to the empty tomb, we see our own death. We see our own tomb. We see our own emptiness. We remember how we have treated other people, members of our family, friends, and neighbors. Lord, as we come to the empty tomb, we see a hungry world before us. The pain of hurting people, the sadness of those sick and dying. But today, Christ, we come to your empty tomb to hear the good news that you have risen to heal us. You have risen to set us free. You have risen to bring us to new life and bind us together in love. Remind us of your promise today that Christ, Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. 
living God, when the first disciples heard the news that you had risen from the dead, they were afraid and they didn't know what to say. May we be bold enough to believe this almost unbelievable story and share your good news, both word and deed, as you bring the whole world from death to life. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I had in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he had appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning, kids. Happy Easter. Welcome to the children's message. You know, I've always wanted to do a cooking show, and so I kind of thought maybe the Easter children's message would be my opportunity to do that, because one of my favorite Easter traditions is, is making family favorite recipes, uh, going back and pulling out some recipes of my mom and grandma and, and uh, making some favorite food for Easter when the family comes over. It's a little bit of a disappointment this year, you know, we're all kind of at home alone, uh, families, you know, have to stay at their own homes, and so my family's not coming today, uh, but I think I can still make some of those things. So my mom had a pasta salad that she always made, I'm going to go in my pantry, I know I've got some pasta in here, uh, we haven't always had everything we've wanted lately because of limited trips to the grocery store, uh, but look at that, macaroni. So. I'm going to start off, uh, you just want to open up the box, and I know that much, and then you dump the macaroni in the bowl, whole box of it. Woo! That's not enough. So, so much for the cooking show. Um, but there are other things about Easter that we're pretty excited about. We still like to decorate, even though people aren't coming over. We've got some beautiful flowers that have died. We do have Easter baskets. Easter baskets are always fun. Look at this. A lot of, a lot of fun items in here for the kids in the Easter basket. There's uh, red beans and rice and some quinoa uh, and for the sweet tooth sweetened condensed milk. That's a disappointment too. Hmm. Well, we're going to find Easter around here somewhere. Look at this. Brand new pop-up Peekaboo Farm Easter book. I'd like to read this to you uh, this morning. All right, here we go. Three pink piggies are splashing water in the sun. Can you see a feathered friend hiding from the fun? Look behind the trees. <gasps> Peekaboo, it's a goose without a head. All right, we are not doing very good over here finding Easter anywhere. Oh, these all seem to be a little bit of a disappointment. Um, maybe Pastor Dane, maybe things are going better at his house. Let's check in with him and see if he's been able to find Easter. That Pastor Justin is just a weirdo, isn't he? I mean, he's looking for Easter in all those places. Uh, I don't understand why you'd go looking for Easter in your kitchen. That's not where you find Easter. You find Easter in really fun imaginative things like going in your kid's playroom and finding costumes to wear. And I thought, what better costume to wear on Easter than a little baseball action? I got my twins helmet on, I got my baseball glove. We're gonna pretend that we're the Minnesota Twins and it's spring, right? And so baseball's gonna be on this Saturday 
no, it's not. So that's not really a good idea. It's kind of bumming me out. There's no baseball right now. What else could we dress up? I know. Just a second. One second here. Here we go. Uh, I have an idea. Just a minute. I know we'll be the Vikings. Because what says Easter better than the Minnesota Vikings? They're undefeated this year. Uh, they got rid of that silly Stefan Diggs receiver. And they'll probably bring back Randy Moss this year. That's right. How better to celebrate Easter than throwing a few touchdowns? Yeah. What's that? You say that's not what Easter is about either? Hmm. Let me think. Uh, hold on. I got one more idea. Just a second. I know what my kids love on Easter. We're going to dress up in one other costume. Surprise them, maybe. Uh, I'm going to dress up as the Easter Bunny because, you know, I don't think they've ever seen the real life Easter Bunny. So we'll do that. Uh, Isaac has this old costume that I can put on. I think he wore it when he was three. So we'll see if I can squeeze into this thing. There we go. Big guy in a little costume. Here, I've got a basket here, right here. Yep, yep. Gonna be the Easter Bunny hopping around. <sighs> this thing's kind of hot. And doesn't seem to fit that well. I'm kind of out of ideas. You got any more, Justin? Wow, I guess seeing Pastor Dane in that bunny suit makes me realize how silly it is to think that we could find Easter. After all, since the first Easter, Easter's always found us, even when the disciples and the early followers of Jesus were looking for him at the first Easter. They had a hard time finding Jesus. It was Jesus that showed up and found them. So kids, this Easter, it might look really different. Things might not be the same way that they've been in the past, but guess what? Easter will still find you, and Jesus will still find you, with a message of love and life, and a message that says that no matter what, you belong to God, and that God will always be with you. Happy Easter.
gospel for this Easter Sunday comes from the Gospel of Mark in the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices in order that they might go and anoint the body of Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had just risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were afraid. But he said to them, Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Look, there's the place where they laid him. But go now, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Happy Easter, everyone. Christ is risen. Uh, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. You know, it's really weird to be sitting here without anyone giving the response to my words. Uh, that's the first time that's ever happened to me on an Easter Sunday. Uh, I'm doing my best here. I've got my pretty clerics on, making myself look good, but it's just not the same, is it? My wife and I have talked a lot these past few weeks about how this Easter was going to be pretty different because 2020 has not been our favorite year. It's a year that has not gone the way we had hoped, to say the least, and here all of us are on Easter sitting in our own homes, not able to celebrate in the way we had hoped either. Some of us are stuck in grief. Some of us are stuck in struggle, stuck wondering what's next for us and for our world. So since things have been a little bleak lately, I thought to lighten the mood, I'd begin this Easter sermon with a bit of a joke. Every year on Easter Sunday for the last couple of decades, the first call I've received was a call from my dad. He calls me up early and he says in this really excited way, Dane, have you heard the good news? Now I'm usually a little groggy at this point of Easter morning and not really excited for dad's antics, but I play along anyway every year because he's my dad. No, dad, what's the good news? And every year my dad answers the same way. Dane, the good news is they can't find the body. My dad laughs and he laughs and he laughs at his own joke. I know it's not a great joke, but every year for the last couple of decades, this is the joke I've looked forward to because it's a joke that was told by my dad. And as corny as it is, I love the joke because in Dad's joyful way, it gets at the promise of the resurrection and reminds me what this day is all about. If you're looking for Jesus in a graveyard, don't bother. He's not there. The good news is they can't find the body. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
for the last couple of decades, Easter morning has begun with a call from my dad. Every year, I've looked forward to my caller ID flashing dad and picking up the phone to hearing his sweet, giggly, fatherly voice telling me the best news in the world. But this year, it's not going to happen. You see, this year is the first Easter I've faced without my dad. He passed away on January 5th of this year. And to make things worse, today, April 12th, would have been his 71st birthday. So this is yet another uncomfortable first for me and my family. As I said, 2020 has not been the best year, so I hope you'll excuse me if today doesn't feel as celebratory for me. Part of me doesn't much feel like celebrating because at least part of me is stuck in the tomb of Good Friday, stuck in grief, stuck in loss, stuck in that place of unbelief, not trusting if these Easter promises we look forward to every year are true. I've heard from many of you that you are in a similar place. Many of you have lost a dear loved one this year. Many of you are afraid you might lose one in the coming weeks and months. Some of you are worried about coronavirus and how this pandemic is all going to turn out. Lives are on the line. Jobs are on the line. Livelihoods are on the line. What's next? How's this story going to end? Maybe you come to your computer screen or your radio this morning looking to hear some good news. Just a little nugget of that best news in the world, but you're also not sure what to do with that news in light of the world we're faced with. Well, maybe it'll be a little comfort knowing that the women who came to the tomb on the first Easter long ago didn't know what to do with the good news either. You just heard the story. You've probably heard this one before. In Mark's gospel, the women come to the tomb to pay their respects and bring spices to anoint the body of Jesus. They don't really know what to expect. They think to themselves, who's going to roll away the stone when we get there? They're stuck in their grief and their sadness, looking down and sad. But when they arrive at the tomb, they look up and they see the stone has been rolled away. And when they enter the tomb, they don't find Jesus. They find a young man sitting there on the right side of the place where Jesus should be. Are you looking for the body? He asks. Sorry, you can't find the body here. Jesus isn't here at all. He's been raised from the dead. Now, you might think, based on other versions of this Easter story, that the women would be filled with laughter at the angel's words right away. You would think they'd run from the tomb, filled with joy at the Easter promise, ready to tell others that their Lord and Savior has come back from the dead, that God's victory has been won, that their grief and sadness are no more, they've been wiped away. But no, no, this just sounds like a bad joke at first, doesn't it? It can't be, the women think to themselves. We can't find the body. It's too good to be true. And they run away, filled with terror and amazement, and they say nothing to anyone because they're afraid. Some ending to the best news in the world, right? Shouldn't this story have a happy ending? Shouldn't it end like the other gospel versions of this story with an appearance or two of Jesus meeting the disciples in the flesh? Well, that's what a few scribes thought as they recorded this story from Mark. You see, the story we read this morning is the original ending of the gospel of Mark. But if you look in your Bible, there are some other endings tacked on. And the best scholars say that those endings were most likely written years after this original story because it wasn't the good news that those scribes thought should be shared with the world. The best news in the world can't end like that, can it, in uncertainty, and women left in fear and trembling? So the people who copied down this story decided that they would add a different ending, add some of their own words about appearances of Jesus later on and how he was disappointed the disciples didn't believe this story at first, but Jesus loved them anyway, and 
he came back to share the good news with them in the flesh. You know, that's a nice way to wrap a bow on the story. It's a nice way to make you feel all warm and gooey inside when you're feeling a little bad about a disappointing ending and when you're in need of some good news. But you know what? I, I actually like the original ending that we heard today better. I mean, isn't it a little comforting that even the women at the tomb the first Easter weren't sure what to think of the good news at first? Isn't it a little comforting to know that they struggled in their faith, too? I mean, when you're faced with grief and despair and uncertainty, sometimes it's hard to believe something so unbelievable as a story that a man has been raised from the dead, especially when it's your Lord and Savior who was supposed to come and conquer the world. I mean, would this story really be that great of news if it wasn't? just on the borderline of a little too good to be true. Because sometimes, sometimes the best stories in the world are hard to believe at first. But over time, you think about them and you think maybe they are true. And maybe they are just good enough to move us and to change us and bring life out of the deadest places in our world. There's a story I heard years ago about a man who went to worship on an Easter Sunday, and it was hard to be there. It was his first Easter after losing his wife of 50 years. And in the days leading up to that worship service, he wasn't sure he wanted to be there at all. It was going to be hard to face all those people without his wife, but he went. And it was really hard to sit in that pew without her holding his hand and worshiping right along with him. And uh, when it came to the songs, he couldn't sing the hallelujahs. It was too difficult with his throat all choked up with grief. And even if he could sing, it was too difficult to see the words and the music through eyes that were filled with tears. But somewhere right in the middle of that service, the realization hit him he didn't need to sing those Easter songs that day. He wasn't there because he was completely lacking in doubt, believing 100% of all those big and almost unbelievable Easter promises. He was there precisely because he was struggling and didn't believe at the time, and he needed to hear others sing the songs of God's salvation and resurrection, and God's hope, and God's new life, when he just couldn't do it on his own. As he sat there in that service, it was like God's good news and grace just washed over him and set him free. And right there, it brought him all the way from death and grief to new life. I know it is hard to believe, isn't it? This powerful story that God has conquered death once and for all, that God will bring all of us one day from death and grief to new life. It's almost too good to be true, isn't it? And maybe you aren't so sure. Maybe you're a little too stuck in your grief, too stuck in your worry and doubt. Maybe you don't feel much like singing the hallelujahs today like me. But I take comfort in knowing that at least some of you are singing those hallelujahs today for those of us who can't so easily. More than that, I take comfort knowing that one day we'll all be gathered together with God and the rest of us will hear those words sung by someone else and something will happen and we will feel God's grace and God's love and God's story of new life washing over us too, and will be brought back all the way from death to life. One day, not too long from now, I promise you we will be together again. And I look forward to sharing these words in the flesh with you and saying them and singing them with you again, because we could all stand to hear some good news right about now. But today, I guess you'll just have to settle for me saying them for all of us. 
and especially for you today. So here they are once again. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. A crown of thorns placed on his head He knew that he would soon be dead He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross Soon all the world would feel the loss Of Christ the King before his Hallelujah 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 hung his head and prepared to die then lifted his face up to the sky said i am coming home now father to you a reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips he drank his last and gave his soul to glory hallelujah 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 The soldier who had used his sword to pierce the body of our Lord said, truly, this was Jesus Christ, our Savior. He looked with fear upon his sword, then turned to face his Christ and Lord, fell to his knees, crying, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Took from his head the thorny crown and wrapped him in a linen gown and laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet his side now in our hearts we know he died to save us from ourselves oh hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Three days went by, again they came to move the stone to bless the slain with oil and spice anointing hallelujah but as they went to move the stone they saw that they were not alone but jesus christ has risen hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good and merciful God, we grieve that we are not gathered close with family and friends in our beautiful sanctuary. We grieve that we cannot actually see each other at church. We grieve that we cannot hear our voices raised together in praise, thanksgiving, and prayer. Yet, as the darkness has vanished, the sun has risen, the trees are budding, the flowers are blooming, and the birds are returning, we are sitting in our homes and care facilities next to the radio or in front of the computer or the TV screen. And we are celebrating an even greater sign of new life, the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that the risen Christ is our guest today. We thank you for all the ways in which the risen Christ is already at work in our world this morning. In particular, we thank you for the presence of the risen Christ in the doctors and nurses in the front lines, bringing hope and healing to those suffering from the coronavirus. We pray that the people behind the scenes, in laboratories, public health and government are looking out for what is coming next and are doing all they can to keep us safe and well. Give courage to those who are fearful. Give company and attention to those who feel lonely. Lift the anxiety and open up new opportunities for those who are losing their jobs. Give hope to those who are tempted to abandon the struggle and whose dreams have been broken. Give health to the sick. Give consolation to the dying. Wipe away the tears of those who are mourning. We pray for Chad Olson, Mary Nelson, Bill Olsen, Norman Hellickson, Joan Nelson, Karen Johnson, Rick Thompson, and Steve Maupin. Empower us to be messengers of Easter joy and hope, 
with our prayers and our actions. We lift to you these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your everlasting love and mercy through your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the great things about Easter and that Easter message is that the tomb is empty. And because of that, Jesus is not there. Jesus is out and about. Jesus is on the move all over the world. And our church might be empty this morning, but guess what? Jesus is on the move. And the church is on the move. They are out and about doing the work of the church all throughout the world. Standing in front of the baptismal font, I'm reminded that all of the baptized are busy at work. All of you are out there doing wonderful things in the name of Jesus, in the name of the church, and we're so grateful for all of that. I'm also grateful for the ways that you always have been so great about filling the offering plate. The offering is still part of the service because this is still an important part of our work together. And so there's no offering plate to go around virtually, but I do know that some of you have done a wonderful job finding ways to get your offering into the church through the mail, by dropping it off even, although it's probably better to do it through the mail, or to do it online if you're not already signed up for online giving, where it just comes out of your checking account, you can also just do it online, a one-time gift. All of those things matter. All of those dollars come together to do the work of the church. And so during this offering time, we would ask that you would consider how you can be generous with your time, with your talents, and with your treasures.
Let us pray. Generous and surprising God, when we thought that death had claimed your only son, you amazed us with the resurrection. Surprise us again with your ability to turn our ordinary gifts into instruments of your life and love for others. Use us and all that we have gathered to transform the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to commune one another as you are in your homes this morning. As you do so, the line that you will use as you share the bread is the body of Christ given for you and with the wine, the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you that are home by yourselves this morning and communing with the body of Christ together with us, it is my honor to say to you, this is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your us all. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us all from death to life, fill you with great joy. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. 
Amen. Christ is risen. Christ has risen. Christ is risen. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Now it's your turn to tell the story, share the good news. Thanks be to God.